morning, everybody. No matter who you are or where you find yourself on life's journey, whether you are a believer, a doubter, or a seeker, you are welcome in this sacred space. And I am so happy to see all these smiling faces today. There's energy here today. Do you not think so? Yeah, I feel it again. So I'm going to turn over our announcements to Joan. Good morning, all. Good morning. Happy June. All kinds of stuff happening. We got Father's Day, we got Pastor's Installation, we got the Pride Festival, not to mention the whole month busting out all over. You got that reference? Yeah. Okay, good. And what I've been enjoying the last few days are reports about Queen Elizabeth's Jubilee celebration. So in honor of her, <laughs> I have my crown. <laughs> So we've got lots of things going on. Look at the back of your bulletin to see them all. I want to highlight a couple of things. Um, we are having special music from Paul during the communion service. And so within that context, let's restrain the desire to applaud the next one performance because that's not really appropriate within that setting. Okay. And also that's a good time to start opening up your uh, cup. Yeah, the music will cover the wrestling. So, open your cups while he's playing, but don't get too distracted. Um, please note that the um, there's a meeting in the chapel after worship for the final organization for the Cry Festival and the booth that we will be having at the last day to sign up to volunteer for that. Um, Strengthen the church offering is today, and we have a letter that was shared from the general minister and the president of the UCC highlighting some of the importance of this offering. Um, the money that's collected <clears throat> through the stream. Sorry. <clears throat> I love that pollen. Um, the money that's collected through this offering, which is one of the five for five offerings that, that we participate in, um, the conference and the national setting, conferences and the national setting share that money equally. And the funds support the things like leadership development and new churches and growth of ministry and also innovations for existing congregations. Um, we know our through our own experience and all the things we've been reading that, you know, the two years, three years into the pandemic, we're, we're still, we still have signs of life and resilience and ingenuity and growth and enjoy both within UCC and local congregations and this offering helps with some of those initiatives. Um, many churches actually reported that they're giving rose in 2021, which is a great sign even in the midst of sorrow, um, people are stepping up and supporting the things that are important to them. Churches learn how to connect virtually for pastoral visitation, prayer, worship, and fellowship. We do that. Um, sometimes to keep screen, but we get it. We want to expand it on it. Um, all that we do to strengthen our churches extends the kingdom of God. Preaching the gospel is our collective calling. Even, even a raging global pandemic cannot suppress either our desire or ability to preach that gospel, nor the Spirit's ability to change lives when we do. So please support that offering today. The envelopes are, are at the back if you didn't pick one up already. Um, and I also would just point out the branching out for June and July is the notice is on the table in the fellowship hall. Uh, we're supporting uh, the Women in Community Service Home for teen girls and there's a list of items there and also the newsletter of things that they particularly need. So, any other announcements that anybody wants to make? Yes, I have two. Okay, I'll just go straight down. All right, thank you. Uh, the first announcement, uh, this church has had a long-standing history with Camp Kaleo, and I've received word that they are in dire need of help. 
They had a huge windstorm here a few weeks ago that damaged a lot of the area over there. Cabins have yet to be totally cleaned and up for par for camping this summer, and they're also looking for kitchen help. So if you have free time and would be interested in driving over to our Camp Kaleo, uh, give me a call and I will get you the right number to call David and find out exactly how you, your talents may be uh, used there at the camp. And uh, so that is my first announcement. Second announcement is on June 1, I became a great grandfather. You know how we grandfathers are, you have to boast about this. Uh, and John Stephen weighed in at seven pounds and 12 ounces. And as I understand, mother and child are doing well. And I also understand that John's grandfather is also doing pretty well for going through this experience. It's his first time being a grandfather. So, all right, uh, those are my announcements. Um, <clears throat> let us then begin our worship with our call to worship. And I invite those who are able to stand uh, to do so. Divine Teacher, whirl around us with your wisdom. Divine Comforter, encircle us with the peace that comes only from you. As the Holy Wind fills our lives with dreams, empower us to live God's hope in this world. As the Holy Fire fills our hearts with visions, empower us to create. May the divine glass of this day move us to know the love of God. And I invite you to turn to your hymnals on page 59 as we sing Holy Spirit Ever Dwelling. Fill our minds with the 
Lisa and our children to come forward. Hello. Hello. Oh, there we are. Hi, good morning. Why don't all of you stand up here and face the congregation? Oh, I love it. Skip me. Can we skip? Oh, I have to skip. Are we skipping this one? How fun. Come on up. We stand right up there. I want you to look first at the behind you at the altar. What colors do you see? What colors are there? Red? Yellow? Orange? Yeah. What does that remind you? What, what do you think of when you see those three colors together? What could come to mind? Can you think of something that comes to mind? Ooh, the sunset. Yes, a fiery sunset. That's a good one. Have you ever seen, have you ever seen those colors in a campfire? No. No? Have you ever had a campfire so that fire starts to blaze and it kind of has a yellow and kind of an orange color to it and red maybe a little bit? Yeah. yeah. Today is Pentecost. Can you say Pentecost? Pentecost. Yes. And this is the day that God's Holy Spirit was given and taught to the disciples that were Jesus' friends. Now, he had Pentecost a long time ago when he was baptized. The Holy Spirit came to Jesus. But today we're going to celebrate that the Holy Spirit has come. And you know what I've got for each one of you? Stand up on the, stand up up, up on the stage. And I want you to share some streamers. There you go. Take a streamer. Ooh. And you have those same colors today. Let's wave them up in the air. Climb in the air. How's that look? Yeah. So we are we are celebrating that the Holy Spirit is here with us today. And that's our story for today. Can we say a prayer together and everyone can follow? Come on. Okay. Dear God. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. And that the disciples continue to teach us. What Jesus had taught them to do. And we love you, God. And all God's children say, Amen. Good job. Come here. And then as you're going down, would you skip and wave your your um, streamers, okay? Go ahead, skip and rainbow streamers. Well, to help us shift gears here just a little, as we enter into our time for our prayers of the people, I'm going to um, ring a bell to where we can just spend a few seconds kind of recentering our minds as we go into this time of, of uh, speaking to God, either through our hearts silently and or verbally uh, exercising our concerns and our joys during this time. So shall we uh, take, let's take three deep breaths. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale.
sit here in silence with the light noise of air conditioning around us, we are mindful of how the Holy Spirit, which you sent to us, indwells not just within us and our hearts, but also throughout the sanctuary and throughout our community and throughout the world. It helps us to remember things that are beyond us, beyond our concerns. We ask that you continue to guide us, show us your light as we strive to become more holistic as humans. At this time, we would like to bring to you specific names of people that we know of, love, whether they are family or friends, knowing that they are in a position in life where we want to send more healing power and light into their lives. Let us remember Jessica, who is the niece of the gym, as she is continually dealing with cancer. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer, O oh Lord. With Polly Landis, who will be coming home soon, uh, back into her apartment, we want to give thanks for looking after her. Shall we pray? Hear yeah. thanks, sir. To Nancy and James Dercoop, as Nancy is dealing with palliative care, give James the strength that he needs uh, to be facing these coming days. Shall we pray? Hear our prayer, O Lord. The sister of John, shall we lift her up in loving care? Hear our prayer, O Lord. James, nephew of Marie, shall we hold him also in prayer of comfort? Hear our prayer, O Lord. What other joys or concerns do we bring today? I'd like prayers for our friend Ron, who suffered a stroke on Tuesday. Let us pray for Ron, who was dealing with a stroke earlier this week. Shall we pray? Hear our prayer, O Lord. Let us then pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <coughs> Scripture this morning is from Acts 2, verses 1 through 21. When the Feast of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Without warning, there was a sound like a strong wind, gale force. No one could tell where it came from. It filled the whole building. Then, like a wildfire, the Holy Spirit spread through their ranks. And they started speaking in a number of different languages as the Spirit prompted them. There were many Jews staying in Jerusalem just then, devout pilgrims from all over the world. When they heard the sound, they came on the run. Then, when they heard, one after another, their own mother tongues being spoken, they were thunderstruck. They couldn't for the life of them figure out what was going on and kept saying, aren't these all Galileans? How come we're hearing them talk in our various mother tongues? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, 
visitors from Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and all parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, both Jews and proselytes, even Cretans and Arabs. They're speaking our languages, describing God's mighty works. Their heads were spinning. They couldn't make head or tail of any of it. They talked back and forth, confused. What's going on here? Others joked, their drunk on cheap wine. That's when Peter stood up and, backed by the other eleven, spoke out with bold urgency. Fellow Jews, all of you who are visiting Jerusalem, listen carefully and get this story straight. These people aren't drunk, as some of you suspect. They haven't had time to get drunk. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. This is what the prophet Joel announced would happen. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on every kind of people. Your sons will prophesy, also your daughters. Your young men will see visions, your old men dream dreams. When the time comes, I'll pour out my spirit on those who serve me, men and women both, and they'll prophesy. We set wonders in the sky above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billowing smoke, the sun turning black and the moon blood red before the day of the Lord arrives, the day tremendous and marvelous. And whoever calls out for help from me, God will be saved. This is the scripture for today. May we hear the word of God in our us. I'd invite those who are able, as we sing our next song, to stand, Breath of the Living God. It's found on page uh, 56, and I know I've been a challenge to you all in teaching new songs, and this is another new one that is also new to me, too, so we'll fumble along uh, together. How does that sound? <laughs> big size industrial fan 
that when the words, and all of a sudden there was this rushing air and it was turned on, and uh, the, the air rushed for sure. However, the loud sound of the motor was so much you couldn't hear the scripture being read. So I've kind of far gone some of that kind of um, um, special effects. So. It is often said that the only thing that is constant in life is change. In the book Future Shock, the author, author Alvin Tolfer explored the topic of how much change can a human psyche handle before it has a meltdown. Now the 20th century has experienced radical shifts both in social structure and dramatic shifts also within the global power. As we moved from industrialization into the space age, we have seen radical change in a way that we communicate to one another. Cell phones have become many computers. We no longer wait to tell people how our day has been like. We just tweet her minute by minute about what's going on in our lives. When in conversation a topic is brought up and no one seems to have the answer at hand, I'm still getting used to getting my phone out and asking Lexus what the answer is, so it's like instant information. Times are not just a change in them. They are radically changing. Our lesson from Acts this morning is also a story of radical change. Sometimes referred to as the beginning of the Christian church, it is both the conclusion of one form of God being present and the beginning of the next phase of God's presence. The conclusion is the story about one man's life, known as Jesus of Nazareth. Those who had become inspired by Jesus' words and actions now find themselves left alone after Jesus' death and ascension into heaven. And yet Jesus had promised the disciples that they would not be left alone. In this story we call Pentecost, we see the coming of the Holy Spirit, the one that Jesus said was to comfort and to guide. It is in the descent of the Holy Spirit that radical change is seen. Where just Weeks before the disciples were hiding behind closed doors in fear, with the advent of the Holy Spirit descending upon them, the disciples now find themselves, find within themselves the strength to start sharing the message that the kingdom of God is truly alive in this world. It is no longer a concept of something to strive toward, but rather the reality to live into. Modern Christians speak of Pentecost Sunday as an original title or label, meaning on the day that the Holy Spirit descended upon the disciples, the event was named Pentecost. When in actuality, the descending of the Holy Spirit came during a Jewish festival of Pentecost, also known as Shabbat, or the Harvest Festival. Now, the Harvest Festival really was the original festival, but then it shifted into the celebration of receiving the Ten Commandments from Mount Sinai, which came 50 days after the exile of the Egyptian pyramid. In the book of Acts, Luke writes of a similar story that the descent of the Holy Spirit onto the heads of the disciples came 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus from the grave. So I think we can, with some integrity, say that the word Pentecost in and of itself refers to a beginning period of great awakening of spiritual level. And this awakening isn't just a one-time happening. We saw it first at Mount Sinai with the receiving of the Ten Commandments. 
we read about it at the festival of Pentecost. We saw it in Europe in what we call the Reformation. And we have seen it three times in this country. Historians of American religion generally recognize three specific awakenings in the United States and Canada. The first Great Awakening happened in 1730 and is pegged to kind of uh, peaked out in, in 1760, marking the end of European style of church organization and created an experiential, democratic, Protestant community of faith called evangelicalism. And the Congregationalists in New England were one of those organizations that came from that. The Second Great Awakening was between 1800 and 1830. For some reason, it seems to run into 30 year cycles, which is probably generational. It ended Calvinistic theological dominance and initiated a new understanding of free will that resulted in the voluntary system for church membership and benevolent work. And then the Third Great Awakening uh, began in 1890 and ran through about 1920 with two distinctive manifestations. The social gospel movement is one of them, with its progressive politics, and then the Pentecostal movement, with an emphasis on miraculous transformation, such as speaking in tongues. Now, during each of these periods, old patterns of religious life gave way to new ones and eventually spawned new forms of organizations and institutions that interwove in society, in our social, economic, and political change. Leading church historian, Diana Butler Bass, in her book, Christianity After Religion, proposes some startling similarities to where Christianity is at today and the story of Pentecost. And she sees not just America, but a world in a new awakening. Yet, in 2004, a survey was done by the Barnum organization that found that young adults who are outside of the church hold intense negativity uh, in viewing Christianity in general. 87% say Christianity is too judged. 85% accuse churchgoers as being hypocritical, meaning what they say is not in line with how they act, especially in teachings of Jesus and social justice. 72% of Christianity is out of touch with reality, they feel. And yet 30% think that religion is relevant to their lives. So, in light of these statistics, how do we recognize this new awakening? Well, it can be seen in a collapsing of many of our traditional institutions, ranging from fraternal orders. How many elks do we have being rolled away? How many, um, um, yeah, can't even think of any of the other social uh, organizations anymore that are fraternal. Um, my dearest friend is a member of one, but they are all white hairs. So there just is not this enrollment coming in anymore. Um, <clears throat> we see a lack of trust in our financial and governing bodies, and in the increased closure of mainline denominational churches. So how often do we hear someone say, well, I'm spiritual, I'm not religious. How do we define the words religious and spiritual? Are they separate unto themselves in action? Or can there be a blending between religious and spiritual realities? Well, religious is a European definition, which has come to mean a system of beliefs about God. In modern times, religion has become indistinguishable from systematizing ideas about God. It has categorized 
organized, objectified, and divided people into exclusive worlds of right versus wrong, true versus false, orthodox versus heretic. And us versus them and power. Is it any wonder that 70% of young people steer their organized energy? And yet the root word of religion is religio, which means faith living, subjective experience including love, veneration, devotion. Transcendence, trust, a way of life, an attitude toward the divine or nat our nature. The word religio is actually more in tune with our modern understanding of what it means to be spiritual. This then explains the major shift in just a decade to many Christians considering themselves both spiritual and religious instead of separating religious and spiritual. These people are using the institution, their denominational affiliation, as a part of their spirituality and how they grow. Our text in Acts ends with Peter saying, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Diana Butler Bass points out that the word salvation has become to mean eternal life in most of the modern religious circles. But the root word for salvation is salvus, meaning whole, sound, healed, safe, well, unharmed. The spirituality that is found in the word salvation then brings us into well-being or an authentic sense of personhood and asking of who am I in relationship to the I am who addressed Moses in the form of a burning bush. The significance of Pentecost story isn't in the descent of the Holy Spirit upon the disciples, because the Holy Spirit actually has been recorded throughout Scripture of having come many times. Or that they were able to speak in tongues that those who were in hearing distance could understand, although all of that is important. To me, the significance comes in the act of of Peter seizing the moment to tell onlookers about his experience with Jesus and how that relationship has given deeper understanding of God. He didn't just stand around bathing in the moment of being um, filled with this descending Holy Spirit, those flames that so many pictures show, but rather he shared with those around him how God's love is available to all peoples. What is happening within the story is the shift from God being found within those four walls of the temple to God act, uh, acting through a new temple. The temple has now become established inside human bodies, being connected with the Holy Spirit. Luke tells us that God dwelling with us started with a man named Jesus of Nazareth. And now it has moved into all humanity through the person that we identify as the Holy Spirit. Divine Congregational Church is a current story of Pentecost. We are a people of longing to bind ourselves to God. Recognizing that God is the vine, our source of life, and that we are one of its branches. And a few of our fruits are honest 
extravagant wealth. It's as simple as the pollen in your garden. Support of the LGBTQ community. And these are just to name very few of the things that our Pentecost story is telling and being shown. family of faith to work at unfolding the ritual of faith with experience and wonder. A spirituality that enlivens the heart and opens the soul to greater possibilities beyond who we are right now. The world is in its early stages of a new awakening, an awakening going on around us is not an evangelical revival. It's not returning to the faith of our fathers or recreating our grandparents' church. Instead, it is a great returning to ancient understanding of the human quest for the divine, reclaiming a faith where belief doesn't mean having all the answers, where behavior is not followed by a list of do's and don'ts, and where belonging to a Christian community is less like joining an exclusive club, but more of a relationship with God and with others. A religio and the experience of the selves. As new days with new um, as new days with new challenges present themselves, I challenge you to, on this Pentecost Sunday, to ask this question. Who am I in God? All week long, ask yourself, who am I in God? For this is the beginning question a journey of a living spirituality that will bring with it a new awakening within our own soul. If you'll join with me our call to communion. We celebrate the divine who hovered over creation and brought order out of formalness. We praise you, Spirit. We celebrate the divine spirit who filled Jesus with power and wisdom and through him made divine life available to all. We praise you, Spirit. We celebrate the spirit who has been poured out on all people and lead us into the reign of God. We praise you, sir. And so, as we gather at this table, we recognize the Spirit's presence among us, and we open our hearts to the Spirit's influence. Please join with me in this affirmation of faith. We believe in the divine creator of all that has been made the parent of the whole creation. We believe in the divine Savior of all that has fallen, the restorer of our broken world. We believe in the divine life of all that lives, the love that binds all things together in one divine family.
Jesus, on the eve of his crucifixion, gathered his friends for a meal. During supper, he took a loaf of bread and he gave thanks for it. And then he broke it and passed it among them with these words, This is my body, which is broken for you. Eat and remember me. And then after the meal, Jesus took the cup of wine and gave thanks for it. Then he passed it among them with these words. This is my blood, which is shed for you. Take, drink, and remember. So now we eat and we drink and we remember Jesus and the divine love that he showed us. Spirit, as we share this bread, share this bread and wine, let it be sharing in Christ's body and blood, Christ's life and presence. And may we embody your life, love, and presence in our homes and communities. Amen. And because of our love. the divine giver. We seek ways to share our love through our treasures, talents, and time. Whether we give in this hour or throughout this week, may we remember that God's Spirit encircles these gifts with hope. invite those who are able to stand as we give our blessing to our offering. If you'll pray with me. Holy winds of excitement, may the gifts we share today and throughout this week nudge us to dream your dreams. 
May our giving inspire us to embrace your visions for our world. Holy Spirit, enliven our souls to create your realm of justice and peace on earth. Amen. And our closing hymn is found on page 373. They did not build a lane.